Thank you for tuning in to Comfort Cooking with uh, Ariana. If this is your first time, click the subscribe button and like the video. Today we're doing chicken cordon bleu. A lot of little steps, packs a lot of flavor. Um, now, here's the deal. Clean your meat. Clean it. I don't care if it says hand trimmed. You take it home and you clean it some more. I am very meticulous. My mom and my aunts are scientists. Trust me, clean your meat and clean it again if you think it's clean. Um, once you've trimmed your meat, your chicken, you're going to butterfly it. And when you butterfly it, um, basically all you're doing is slicing it in half like this. So then it opens up really nicely, okay? Once that's done, you have to pound it and you have to pound it some more and keep pounding it. What you want to do is you want to take this size chicken breast to, you know, about, about almost a quarter of its actual size. But you want to make sure it's about an inch and a half to two inches thick so that it cooks evenly because you don't want to serve raw chicken to anybody. What, you, what are you going to pound it with? You're going to, I'll show you in a minute. So you don't want to serve raw chicken. So you can take saran wrap, you can take aluminum foil, you can take parchment paper. I like parchment paper because it doesn't break down. Lay it over your chicken. I don't have a meat mallet. <laughs> I have a trusty, uh, what do you call Mom. this thing? Rolling pin. So, Mom, you didn't have to use that at home tree. I haven't used it in a hundred years. You're right, because I have not made pies or anything. And you're just going to pound it. And you don't have to be gentle with it. You're just going to beat this meat till it, you know, says, don't beat me anymore. But what you want to do is you want to take it from side to side. You don't want to keep beating in the same spot. So you just keep beating your meat? You just keep beating your meat. Uh, you want to turn it sometimes. That way you can make sure you're, you know, spreading it all out. And it's going to look ugly, but we're already getting bigger. I'm not using all my, all my strength, but I am using quite a bit of force. And I'll let you take a peek at it. See how wide it's gotten already? It's gotten pretty wide just from pounding it. Like I said, you want it to get to about... Inch and a half to two inches thick. I'll show you why, I'm, I'm but you want to make sure that's my little helper. Um, because when you stuff any kind of food, it takes longer to cook. But because you're coating it with breadcrumbs and everything else, you want to make sure that obviously it's safe for human consumption. I am really picky about how I feed people and. I want it done, but I will eat a rare steak any day of the week. That cow is still mooing. I'm eating. So I'm going to finish pounding this out, and then I'll get back to you in a couple minutes, okay? All right. Okay, so got the chicken pounded out. I want you to come to have a look. If you pound it too thin, you're going to tear it, but, you know, we can, that, that gets tucked in there. So that one little chicken breast ended up spreading to there. This is about an inch and a half to two inches thick. Not the prettiest looking piece of meat, but it gets breaded with the panko breadcrumbs and everything else. And, um, you know, trust me, it's well worth it if you do it right. So let me go wash my hands. I'm going to show you what we're doing next. Um, always be safe when you're dealing with chicken because cross-contamination is a big thing you ever go to a restaurant and you know come home and you have that tummy ache cross contamination be careful so let me wash my hands and then we'll get back to the rest of the video three all right so we have our chicken pushed aside here the next part is your breadcrumbs and your dredging material i do not measure how many breadcrumbs i'm going to use i just know i need enough to coat the entire chicken breasts. I prefer panko breadcrumbs because they're crunchier. I don't pre-toast them at all because who likes burnt bread? And I do go through a lot of panko breadcrumbs uh, here, so, you know, it's just what 
I do. I, I go through them all. That's what I do. That's what I use. And I like what I use. So um, that's why I have two bags in there. Plus, I want to make sure that it gets coated really good. Put that in there. You're going to use flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. There is no precise measurement for it. It's just, like I said, it's just enough so that you can coat your chicken and um, after you stuffed it, of course. But, key, season. You want every element of the, the dish to be seasoned. So you don't just give flour and say, okay, well, here, that's what that is. And you don't just put your breadcrumbs in there and say, okay, well, that's just what that is. Season it. And what we're going to do is... What I like to season with ham, obviously, is part of the chicken cordon bleu. The cordon is French for pig. Cordon. Ha! Ah, language lesson for the day. Um, I use about a teaspoon. Okay, I'm going to use two teaspoons. Maybe three. It looks like a lot, but you're seasoning it. Season your egg. That was half a teaspoon. And then your flour. And I use two teaspoons of no flour. Two and a half. And the reason why I say that is the flour touches the chicken. Because your chicken is not necessarily seasoned. It's not brined. You will throw some seasonings on top of the chicken. But it's just on top. Then the flour touches it. But because you rinse some of the flour off with the egg dredge. The egg has to be seasoned. And then you go into your panko, which is going to, you know, be the first bite of flavor that you taste. So you want to make sure, like I said, every element is seasoned. I like white pepper in mine. So I'm a, that, I like that pepper. I'm a pepper girl. Again, season every part of it. Now, yes, you do use fresh parsley. I would, but it's baking. And because it's dried breadcrumbs i don't want to add the fresh element of um parsley to that so i'm gonna use the dry because it's just probably gonna give me a i wouldn't say probably it would definitely give me a crunchier uh crust around the the, the chicken cordon bleu i like color my grandmother used to use a lot of paprika it makes everything so pretty i mean it kind of already looks pretty don't use Hungarian smoke for this. The sweet Hungarian, it gives a different flavor. Black pepper, white pepper have different flavors. But um, if, you, if you're using already ground pepper, I would probably say put half a teaspoon in it. Um, it depends on how much pepper you like. I'm using fresh ground, so it looks like I'm putting an awful lot. I'm only probably putting a half a teaspoon in here. Um, I'm gonna not put it in the egg, but I will put a little bit, maybe like a quarter teaspoon on the flour because it's a course of grind. Um, once that's all seasoned up, like I said, make sure everything is seasoned, every element. Give it a quick stir. And this is why I use so much of the salt because obviously you know, bread, you can't really see a lot of it, but you can taste it. So, again, depending upon how much breadcrumb you use, adjust your salt for it. I used about a half a bag and maybe, maybe a quarter of another bag. Again, I don't need to measure that because I'm not using it for anything else. Same thing with the flour. I'm just going to give that a quick whir. Now, here's an uh, important aspect of that. When you're, uh, when you're getting ready to stuff, you want your uh, ham and cheese to be room temperature. You don't want it terribly cold. You don't want it melted either. You just want it room temperature. Go to your local deli, have them slice it razor thin. 
it does make a difference in flavor to me. You don't want to bite into it and there's this big glob of cheese. We're not making cheese sticks here, but we're making a, a delicate meal. So you want your cheese really thin. Can you come in? Look at how thin that is. I don't know. Super thin. I use baby Swiss. I like the little holes. Because I'm not going to use all of it. I'll use it on the sandwich. I do have a preference for ham. I do not like boiled ham for this. Um, the Polish boiled ham has no flavor to me whatsoever. It's useless. It's about as useless. I do like ham off the bone. Again, I can get it at the local deli. Whatever ham you like, get it. Um, and you want that slice super thin too because you want to make sure that the chicken is cooking. So this is relatively paper thin. And that's how I'll get my uh, deli meats anyway because I like them thin on my sandwiches. So we're going to bring our chicken back. And I'm going to move this over because once I stuff it, we're going to dredge. But I need the room. Give me a second. I've just opened it up. Give me a second. I should have pulled my meat out before I touched my chicken because I cannot touch the meat and then go to the deli meat. So give me a second. All right, so now we're getting ready to stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of lay out the cheese. I'm gonna start with like two pieces, what I'm, maybe three. All right, so I'm gonna do three pieces. Because what I want to make sure I do is create a seal for the ham. Because the ham is going to go in there. I laid one slice on one half of the breast. I don't need to do that with the ham. I just want to make sure that there's enough ham per bite. You know, that's the star attraction next to the cheese. So, you just kind of lay that out. So, how many pieces of ham do you think that is? Three, maybe? Three. Three slices? Yeah. And then you just kind of fold it over. And you want to tuck the pieces in there because you're about to dredge. No, you could use toothpicks, but I don't see the purpose of using the toothpicks. It's just a personal preference not to for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second one and then I'll get back to you. All right. Now my hands are washed, the meat's all, the chicken's all folded up with the ham and the um, cheese. I'm just going to, between the two of them, I'm going to take about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And that's it. Just so I can make sure that that's the seasoned. Tricky part. You say you don't like salt, but I think you do. No, I don't like salt, but I, I use it sparingly. It's just one of those, it's a necessary evil when you're cooking. Get away! Um, salt is one of those things that unless you are on a sodium restricted diet, which is why most sodium restricted diets use a lot of herbs and this is dash things because salt is a natural enhancer. Um, it just makes the food pop. What am I going to do? I could eat cardboard. So anyway, we're going to take our chicken breasts and we're just going to dredge it in our egg mixture. And from there, this is the messy part. From there, we're gonna go to our flour. And then just let me put that in there because I'm gonna go from one to the next. I wanna make sure my pan is ready. So let me move my uh, prep thing away. Dredge it in the flour. Because you're gonna double dredge in the egg. Okay? Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. It's just it comes with the territory. And remember your your um your elements are seasoned also. So that there. Let's get the second one. I always end up with baseball mitts on my hands because I have yet to master the art of 
one hand wet, one hand dry, that's okay. I have soap, I have water, I have a nail scrubbing. I know how to get that around. So make sure it's dredged really good because when you go back in your egg, you're gonna do a quick dip and that's when you're going to your panko breadcrumbs. Stick them down in there really good. So why do you do the flour and then the breadcrumbs? Because the flour helps the um, breadcrumbs stick better. It creates a barrier one and it helps everything stick. So let me get my mitts taken care of because I have everything out of the wet. I'll be back. Like I said, this is a lot of steps, but it packs a lot of flavor. It's one of those classic meals. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my wet done. Now, no more mitts. Like I said, I never mastered the art. But what you're going to do is you're going to pack this into that panko. And you're going to make sure that it is covered in these breadcrumbs. Um, you know, when I say pack it, press it down in there. Because that's the crunch. That's the crunch factor. Regular breadcrumbs, yeah, they add a little bit of crunch. But panko, by nature, it feels crunchier before you even cook with it. And just keep packing it down because once it's done if <laughs> you trust me you will know that you have a delicious crust on it and voila that is breaded and ready for the oven that is one chicken cordon bleu two breasts are going to be more than enough to feed at least four people depending um, I like um, leftover, so and I'm not big on leftovers, but I do like chicken corn on blue leftover, probably because it is pretty a, it's a pretty tedious um, meal to make. You know, it's one of those things where it's like you better make it and you better <laughs> make sure you make enough because you're not getting me making this anytime soon. And if you ever make the mistake with that of not dredging your um, chicken enough the second time in the egg batter you will know and i make rock and roll baby Woohoo! rock and roll baby um so i and i do make mistakes some of the white from the flour coming through here it's not gonna stick but I have a trick for that from there I sprinkle it on so when it starts to cook the natural moisture will help that adhere two chicken breasts that is a huge meal portion so again it can feed a few people because you're gonna slice it thin. you have two types of meat in there so let me show you what we're going to do. Let me wash my hands and then we'll finish this up. All right. So we want to start this at a 350 degree preheated oven. If you've pounded this chicken to about one and a half to two, two inches thick, it should only take you about 25 to 30 minutes to cook thoroughly. Um, so I'm going to cook this, like I said, at 325. I've had my oven going since the start of this video. Um, I'm going to pop these in. I will check on them periodically because I want to make sure that the, the filling's not completely like a chicken KF is coming out all the way. Um, kind of do self checks on it. Self checks. <laughs> um, quality control checks. So we're just going to pop it in there. You don't have to cover it. Your house is going to start smelling real good here soon. Um, chicken cordon bleu, like I said, is one of those things where it's just so many hey, little steps. Hey, buddy. But it pays off big at the end. It's just super good. So I'm going to leave a list of the ingredients. I don't really follow recipes. I'm sorry. Um, I think I've made this six or seven times in my life, but because it's so time consuming, I wouldn't say my life, but in the past eight two years three years i made it six or seven times not a lot it's one of those special we're gonna have a special night kind of deal um 
I'll see you here in a minute. I'll show you the end product and, you know, I'll leave a list of the uh, ingredients in the comment section and below in the description bar. Don't forget to like the video. I'm stumbling over my words, but I'm just trying to keep it real. All right, see you here in about 30 minutes. All right, so we're about halfway through the cooking process. Um, I have it on the lower rack because, again, I have, I have a real big issue with even thinking about that I'm going to serve someone undercooked uh, chicken or pork or anything. So I have it on the bottom rack to make sure that it's cooking. Um, like I said, we're at halfway mark. I just wanted to check to make sure none of the fillings were falling out. And when this is done, I'll probably stick it in the broiler just to make sure it gets that nice goldeny brown uh, crispy texture. That's an add-on that I like to do. And I'll see you back here in about 10 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. Okay, cool. All right, so this is your end product of your chicken cordon bleu. See, I told you it's going to get all goldeny and everything else like that. So, um, a good rule of thumb, when you see everything starting to drip out, that's when you know it's done. Look how pretty that is. That is beautiful. You have all your ham and your cheese. Uh, we're having it tonight served with uh, garlic, uh, garlic butter, asparagus, and rice. Just super simple we have the other one for lunch tomorrow or dinner like i said it's one of those things that's so time consuming to prepare that i truly will just eat the leftovers of that and i'm not one for leftovers at all so garlic buttered potatoes sauteed white rice um we do a lot of white rice in this family um whatever starch you want and your chicken cordon bleu Thanks for watching. I know this was a long video, but um, yeah, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and tell me how you like the recipe.